and done, which means... I've had the Steam Deck for five months now, and while I praised it for being an amazing console, I docked a few points for being a very limited PC. Now, I've used that thing to game a lot, I've carried it around everywhere, and I've seen it evolve with a ton of software updates. So let's take a look at the Steam Deck after five months. Does the hardware hold up? Is the gaming performance still good? Is the battery life still decent? And has it improved as a PC? Now speaking about improving stuff, how about you improve the security and safety of your internet connection? Thanks to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safing. They make the Portmaster, which is an amazing tool that lets you control and monitor your internet connection with a simple graphical user interface. You get block lists, you get profiles depending on your current connection, and you can even tweak settings per app. It's also completely open source and free. Safing also makes the SPN or Safing Privacy Network. It's a powerful VPN alternative which spreads your connections across the globe instead of rerouting all your connections to only one server. With the SPN, you can be everywhere at once and no website can build a profile from your visits and your location. Of course, you also get all the benefits from a traditional VPN. If that's something you'd like to try, and if you want to help support Safing's open source work, you can subscribe to the SPN right now, or download the Portmaster by heading in the link in the description below. Okay, let's start with the hardware. Five months in, how does it hold up? Well, I'm happy to report that it hasn't aged, really. The sticks are still responsive and don't drift. The rubber coating around them hasn't been smoothed over yet, like on my Xbox controllers. They still click well and they're still precise. The coating on the top does tend to retain finger marks and the stem of the sticks also tends to get a bit dirty, especially if you play games where you need to push the stick against the case a lot. The friction does leave some marks that you can clean. The face buttons also didn't age, they still actuate perfectly, they don't jiggle or move, nothing changed on that front, just like the D-pad which is still perfectly okay. Although it was never that good in the first place, it was already a bit mushy. The shoulder buttons though are a bit looser, but that makes them easier to click than when I first got the deck. Nothing alarming, but it's something I will watch in the future. The triggers are still perfect and the touchpads still respond well but the Steam button and the Options button seem to be even mushier than before. The screen didn't get a single scratch, even without a screen protector, but I also never dropped the deck, so your mileage may vary. I also did notice a bit more creaking when picking up the deck, especially on the left side. I can feel the plastic of the case clicking into place underneath the trigger. It's not broken, but it definitely feels less solid than it once did. Also, the deck can get pretty dirty pretty fast, the seams between the top and bottom plates are relatively wide and they get grimy fast. Of course, I clean them up for your viewing pleasure and also to avoid the inevitable attacks that I must be super dirty to get my deck so dirty. I'll let you know that the rumors aren't true. Us French people get a shower every day. Now, you will need to clean these seams often if you don't want some residue accumulating there. Same goes for the back paddles on which your fingers tend to rest. As the deck heats up, so will your hands, and you will absolutely get some grime around these little paddles. Apart from that, everything feels fine. The SD card still ejects properly and slots it normally, no issues there. The USB-C port, despite plugging the deck in and out multiple times per day, hasn't moved at all and doesn't feel looser than your regular USB-C port. Now, of course, these USB-C cables and ports were always a bit loose, but they were still a vast improvement over the older micro USB cables and ports. I didn't put any accessories on the Steam Deck. No case, no screen protectors, no joystick grip thingies, no covers, no stickers, no nothing. I just leave it as is, I drop it anywhere in my apartment, I'd carry it like that in a bag, and the only time I ever put it in its case is when I know I'm gonna be traveling far and my bag is gonna be banged up, like on a train or on a plane. Apart from that, the deck is just naked and it hasn't got a single scratch, dent or visible mark. So yeah, I will be on the lookout for more creaking, more plastic being a little bit looser or buttons getting mushier, but honestly, after five months, there is nothing important to report. This thing is still as solid as when I once got it. Now, 
Let's talk about the gaming experience on the deck. If anything, it has actually improved since I got the deck. I spent most, if not all, my gaming time on the Steam Deck since I got it. I didn't use my gaming PC or my Xbox for more than one or two hours each in total over five months. Now, what did I play? 23 hours of Vampire Survivors, 6 hours of Hades, 10 hours of Crash Bandicoot, 13 hours of The Sinking City, 22 hours of Rise of the Tomb Raider, 7 hours of Horizon Zero Dawn, 15 hours of the 2013 Tomb Raider reboot, 18 hours of God of War, 7.5 hours of Warhammer Space Marine, 5.5 hours of Lara Croft Go, 7 hours of Firewatch, 5.4 hours of Hitman Go, and 6.4 hours of Portal 2, and a few more hours here and there in various titles I tested, games from the Heroic Games launch and more. That's about 140 hours of game time and this might be a little on the low side compared to people who got the Steam Deck at the same time as I did or even compared to people who got the Steam Deck way later than I did. But for me, that's about one hour of gaming per day and honestly it's a lot more than I used to do before I got the Steam Deck. And in all that time the deck has gotten better at playing these titles. Not necessarily in terms of performance, because that didn't really change at all, but more in how you can tweak that performance. See, the Steam Deck now has per-game performance profiles, which means that you can tweak each game to use specific settings for frame rate limits, TDP, FSR, GPU clock and more. And that lets you avoid resetting all of these settings every time you start a new game. Unfortunately, you still cannot share these settings or download them from other players, and you also can't configure different settings for when you're on battery or when you're plugged in. Sometimes a game can run at 60 FPS on the deck, but you would prefer having more battery life and run it at 30 FPS or 40 FPS instead when you're unplugged. You still have to do all of that manually, because battery life is absolutely still an issue on the deck. On most AAA titles you're looking at at most 2 hours of game time and that's at 30 FPS on low details. So it's not terrible, but it's also not very good. And updates haven't really improved that energy consumption. What has changed is the size of the game library. Since I got it, the deck has passed the 4400 titles certified mark, when it was only at around 1500 5 months ago, and a bunch of my games are already in that list. 37 out of my 203 titles are verified and 105 in total are playable and verified, so slightly more than half my library. Only 44 are marked as unsupported. Now, I say only 22%, but that's still almost a quarter of my library, and that's not nothing. And of course, it doesn't take into account all the games that just haven't been verified by Valve just yet, but could run perfectly well on the deck. Now, this means that someone grabbing a deck today can absolutely play a sizable portion of the Steam library, or build one if they don't have games yet, with a lot of games that will run really nicely. It also means that the catalog will keep growing over time, with more and more games being made compatible, and newer titles generally trying to make sure they run well on the Steam Deck. A bunch of things were also added to ensure the Steam Deck runs as well as possible. You get the possibility to limit games at 40 FPS instead of 30, which makes a bigger difference in smoothness in real use. And 40 FPS is the setting I use in most titles. You also now get a ton more keyboard themes and languages and layouts for games where you need to input something. Although the keyboard is still completely unusable if you don't shift your grip on the Steam Deck. You cannot reach the center. Where my split keyboard at, Valve? Now, the deck's performance in navigating the interface has also vastly, vastly improved. Switching from one tab to the next, opening a menu, browsing the store, it's all a lot smoother and faster than it used to. And it's really, really noticeable. Now, it's still not very customizable though. For example, the library. I would love to be able to reorder tabs there and choose to have a tab for each collection. I sort my games into currently playing, to play next, replay and complete, already complete and won't play. I would love to have the first tab be currently playing instead of great on deck, for example. So while the performance of the games themselves stayed the same, I can safely say that the experience of using the deck to play these games has vastly improved over the past five months. Valve definitely means business with the Steam Deck and they've been supporting it really, really well since it came out. And if you like living on the edge, you can also switch to the beta track now and get all the features before anyone else.
Now, gaming performance is where I'm starting to have a few doubts about the longevity of the Steam Deck as it is. Now, don't get me wrong, games run mostly really, really well. Out of all the games I played, three exhibited performance issues that make them hard to play in good conditions. They are Horizon Zero Dawn, The Sinking City, and Rise of the Tomb Raider. The first two are verified, the last is playable, but not because of performance, just because it uses a launcher and might require you to enter text. And these games are absolutely playable, but Horizon can't hold a stable 30 FPS unless you crank the resolution down so much that it becomes a blurry mess, even with FSR. And the text is generally illegible throughout the whole game. The Sinking City has enormous FPS drops in some areas, or when certain monsters appear, or when using certain weapons like the shotgun, which makes the combat encounters, which are already tense and hard in the game, barely manageable. And Rise of the Tomb Raider had huge FPS drops as well in some areas, meaning that it sometimes turned into a slideshow unless you lowered the resolution and details as well, down to a point where the game really looked terrible. Now these games are graphics intensive, for sure. And they're not that old, but they're also not that new. They're from one or two years ago, at most. And they struggle on the Steam Deck. When a new Witcher game arrives, or the new Horizon of, or God of War drops on PC in maybe two years, do you think the Steam Deck will be able to handle them? I highly doubt it. Now, sure, upscaling technologies help, but they are still blurry, and they don't necessarily make the game look all that good. At least FSR1, as implemented on the deck, doesn't. I'm not super confident that this device will remain able to play AAA titles in the next few years, even at 30 FPS, and that's a bit of a shame. Now, there are also a few other issues, like for example the right stick not working after resuming a Horizon playthrough from sleep, or God of War not being playable at all after resuming in some instances. For indie titles, there are absolutely no issues whatsoever. They all run at full speed and will probably keep doing so for the foreseeable future. Stuff like Hades, Vampire Survivors, Enter the Gungeon, Abzu, the Go series, Firewatch and others all run fantastically well at full resolution, mid to max details and a nice 60 FPS. And I would expect the deck to be able to keep running new indie titles at the same performance in the future. Still, for a portable device, I would expect at least 4 or 5 years of good, decent conditions for virtually every new title. And I'm honestly not convinced that the deck is going to be able to offer that, at least for AAA titles. Because PC developers aren't optimizing for the Steam Deck, they're optimizing for PC. Now, of course, one could argue that developers will optimize specifically for the Steam Deck, but I don't think this will be the majority. The Steam Deck might be very successful, but it pales in comparison with the whole PC market. In 2020, this PC gaming market was estimated at 1.7 billion gamers. PC gamers that don't use a Steam Deck vastly outnumber deck users still, and probably will continue to do so forever. Developers are going to keep pushing the envelope on PC, because that's what the vast majority of PC players want. They want the highest graphics they can have, because if they didn't, they wouldn't have used a PC. And developers, by trying to up the ceiling of higher graphics, will also up the ceiling of the lowest graphics point which means that the Steam Deck will become less and less able to play the biggest mega AAA titles. And of course, this only applies to AAA titles. Indie games will probably never have an issue running on this thing. Even if it stops supporting the latest AAA titles, it doesn't mean it will be obsolete. It will just have one of the biggest games library ever seen on a portable device, and it will still have value for years and years, even if it can't play the latest and greatest. Now, of course, you can also play non-Steam games on the Steam Deck, and it's also a PC. Now, the main thing I used here was the Heroic Games Launcher. Now, you could also use Bottles to install Origin, Ubisoft Connect, or even the Epic Game Store. But I don't have any real games on these other stores, apart from the Epic Game Store, so that's the one I tried, and I mainly played Enter the Gungeon and Abzu. The experience of playing these games is just as good as playing any Steam game. You're not losing any features. You can still have the performance overlay and tweak the performance settings, although you will be tweaking them for everything that the Heroic Games Launcher opens, not for the specific game that is running. You will also have to go to the desktop mode to install Heroic and add it to your non-Steam games. And using that mode without a keyboard and mouse is still pretty painful. 
You can use the right touchpad as a mouse and use Steam Plus X to open the keyboard, but it's far from practical. Heroic also can't be updated from the Steam Deck interface, so you will have to hop in and out of desktop mode to apply updates, which are pretty frequent, as the launcher has received a lot of updates to make it work better on the deck. It's still not very controller friendly, and you will probably want to use a combination of controller and touch to navigate it well. You can also create a shortcut of each game to add as a non-Steam game, but this didn't work for me. The games just wouldn't launch from these shortcuts at all, opening a Firefox window instead to set the handler for the links, which also didn't work. See, Linux isn't ready for gaming, Windows is so much better. Shut up, baby tiger. Linux is perfect. Now, speaking about the desktop mode, it hasn't really improved at all in the past five months. Apps that you install through FlatHub still receive regular updates, but the base system has not. It's still on Plasma 5.23.5 when Plasma 5.25 is out and 5.26 is three months away. And since a few days ago, the Firefox version was blocked at version 96, which was woefully outdated. And thankfully, Valve in SteamOS 3.3 has pushed that version to basically just use the Flatpak, so it will get updates now. Updates using Discover were also super unreliable for me, with Discover crashing very often while updating with various unintelligible error messages. In general, the Steam Deck's desktop experience isn't one I would recommend for everyone. Still, as of today, it hasn't really evolved at all, and it still lacks a ton of good applications that would make really good sense on the Steam Deck, like for example Lutris. It's still not officially available as a flat pack, and that's a big miss. It just feels that the desktop mode is a stopgap measure to let people add non-Steam titles, but it's not something that Valve really wants to focus on. So for now, I cannot recommend the Steam Deck if what you really want is a PC. If you're looking for a PC first and a gaming device second, don't buy the Steam Deck. Now see, I do have other shirts. So where are we after five months? The hardware doesn't show signs of degradation, apart from a bit of creaking and the already mushy buttons being a bit mushier. The battery holds up perfectly well and the software experience has improved a ton, at least on the gaming side of things. But there are also a few concerns. The deck might not be powerful enough to run new AAA titles from one year, two years or three years in the future with good graphics or a good experience. It already struggles with one or two year old AAA titles, even with FSR on, even on low graphics, it barely manages 30 to 40 FPS. Titles that come out in the next two or three years will absolutely not be a good experience on the deck. Now, indie titles, on the other hand, will run perfectly well, I think, for the whole life of the device. The desktop mode hasn't really received any love since its debut, and it's still pretty limited. And it's now starting to be outdated as well. A lot of apps made efforts to better support the deck, notably Bottles and Heroic. But Lutris is still missing, five months in and we're not seeing a lot of developers rushing to Flatpak to support the deck's desktop mode, unless the main purpose of their app is gaming. So, to conclude, the Steam Deck has just gotten better at what it was already great at, which is being a portable console that plays your PC games. It's really good at that, and the hardware doesn't show any sign of wear and tear, and the performance, while not fantastic on AAA titles, and that's a concern for the future, is still amazing for a lot of games. And it will still have one of the biggest library for any portable handheld, whether it's a console, a PC, whatever, it's gonna have the biggest library for a long, long time. Which means that even in a few years, if AAA titles don't run well on it, it won't be obsolete. It will just have to play all the titles instead of having access to all the latest and greatest mega titles. And I don't think that's really an issue. In the meantime, I'll still use and abuse that little device because it is simply the best way of playing games that I have ever encountered. Just like I encountered this segue to today's sponsor, Tuxedo. Tuxedo makes laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. You get a choice between a few very popular distributions, but you can also just install your favorite one, knowing that the hardware just supports Linux perfectly. 
And if there are a few tweaks needed here and there, Tuxedo has PPAs and repositories that you can use to make sure that everything is just perfect. They have a wide range of devices from small ultrabox, NUX, gaming towers, like workstations that are not GPU intensive, super powerful gaming PCs and gaming laptops, you name it. Anything you want, they probably have. And every device can be configured with a huge variety of keyboard layouts, CPU options, GPU options, SSD, storage, Blu-ray, DVD drives, whatever. You can even have your own graphics design engraved on the lid or the case of the PC. So if you need a new device and you want to make sure you buy it from a company that actually supports Linux development, head over to the link in the description below and buy yourself a Tuxedo computer. They're really cool. Now, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment, basically anything you can do to help like pop it up in the algorithm. And if you didn't like it, you can also dislike and write a comment to tell me why, because both of these things will also make the video pop up with the algorithm. So. Thanks anyways. And if you really enjoy my channel and you want to support the work I do, you can click on the super thanks button, you can click on the PayPal link in the description below, you can join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!